Hi, this is Doug, and this video will cover how to create a, a new phone in the RingCentral phone system for a new user. Uh, okay, so this is kind of a convoluted in and out multi step process, um, and honestly, I get a little confused every time because you do this once every three or four months, and it's like, oh, what the hell did I do last time? Um, but uh, loosely speaking, it goes something like this. Okay, so Ring Central is a voice over IP phone system. It means the calls go over the internet, over an internet connection. Uh, you can have a piece of software that acts as a phone, so it'll route calls to your cell phone. Or uh, there's a web uh, uh, client that you can take a Mac or Windows PC and log into your account and, and uh, calls will route through your PC. Um, and of course, there are hardware phones that uh, can be configured and put on people's desks. Uh, we're old fashioned, so we use a lot of hardware phones. And of course, these are not, strictly speaking, these are phones, these are computers that are pretending to be phones. Uh, we stick with uh, Yealink phones. There are several different manufacturers, but Yealink uh, gives us the most bang for the buck. Our most common model that we use on the desk is a T53W. We do have a couple of T54s and a couple of T57s. The T57s are the ones that are big color touchscreen on them and like Banner Ash have those. Um, but mostly T53W is the common one that you see here. All right, before you can uh, create a user account in Ring Central to configure a phone, uh, there has to be a valid email address. So if you're dealing with a new user, uh, make sure that you have, uh, you know, gone into the My Microsoft 365 admin for Exchange and created a new user, and you know, downloaded the Microsoft Office software on their PC and all that good stuff. Because if you, we don't have a valid email address, you can't create the account. So this is uh, the Microsoft 365 admin center. Uh, if you have the, you know, the administrator credentials, you can log in and create new users and new email addresses. Um, Okay, uh, in this case, uh, we're going to be creating a new phone for uh, the sales account. We already have an existing email for that, so uh, nothing we have to worry about there. That part is taken care of for us. All right, Ring Central. Uh, it's going to start off. Uh, it's going to start off by annoying me. Hold on here a second. All right. Uh, that's what you get when you log in, and uh, you're going to start here with you know, users and adding a user. All right. And of course, we have to uh, add an additional license. Each user for Ring Central costs us $35 per user per month, more or less. Um, so we want to be sparing, <laughs> make sure that we only have as many phones as we need. Um, all right. As you can see, all our existing users are using a Ring EX license. So, you know, that's what we're going to pick here. Whoopee. So, Ring EX, select. All right. And We have some basic information here, and uh, so. This is a generic account, so name is gonna be sales user. All right, we gotta pick the site so that um, the account is grouped in the right place for the right auto attended, et cetera, et cetera. So in this case, this is going to be Santa Ana is Five Star SA, company is Washington. Yeah, I know, I can't change the name of that. So this is gonna be at Washington, so we pick that. Um, extension, it's gonna, it's gonna pick what it thinks is the next one available online. Currently we have the system set up so that the Washington numbers are 100 series numbers and the um, Santa Ana numbers are 200 series numbers, just a little easier to remember. So I have a spreadsheet where I keep track of the numbers that I have used and the ones that are available. In this case, we are going to 
not use what it suggested and put in extension 105. It will not allow you to, to uh, assign an extension that's already in use. All right, going further here, selecting the phone. Um, since we already have the, the uh, phone that, we, that we're going to use, we're going to set up a bring your own device. So um, if you select the, the other option, inventory phone or purchase phone, then it's looking for an existing phone that uh, was used and deleted the user, but it's still available to reassign, or the phone app, so hardwareless phone or purchase phone, and it'll step you through purchasing a phone through them, but we've already got the phone, so bring your own device. Number, it will pick out of the number inventory, and the one that's selected, 44323, is fine, so we'll go ahead and leave that. And uh, we will be charged proactively. Okay, so go ahead and add that. And we are going to activate by assigning credentials so we can put on our own password. The PIN code is used to access the voicemail uh, when, you're, when you're on a phone. So, and it needs to be six digits long and numbers. So keep that in mind. Um, and I keep a spreadsheet where we keep the unique numbers. So we'll go ahead and enter in our passwords. Uh, which I'm just going to paste in, and okay, good, and the pin code that I'm going to assign this, I tend to use the street address uh, and the extension. All right. Ah, uh, security question will always be the same. My nickname, DJ, in lowercase, just in case. All right. Then we have we have to do the uh, emergency response location, which we're going to go ahead and add that. Emergency response location is Washington for this customer, user, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so that part is all done, and we submit that and create the new account, and minimum of five characters. I, ah, the people that design user interfaces should be shot. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> okay, we're going to go with high school mascot. There. Must be uppercase. Must have symbol. Yeah, fuck you. Uh, all right. Let's see if it'll take that. All right. And no updating of password. All right. And we have to do our acknowledgement. Yes, we're going to be charged more money. And it's prorated, of course. So it's only 1813 for what's left of the month. And spinny, 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 and hopefully something happens. All right, very good. Uh, and that is done. So the account is creator. Uh, enable SMS for the number. No, link later. All right, and if we see our users, we have sales user and we have an assigned uh, number. Excellent. So that part is done. Now we have to uh, deal with adding the phone. And yeah, this part always gets a little bit confusing, so God forbid we may have to do it twice. But okay, so we go to our new user account. And then we go to phone here and see if we can add the phone. Of course, it's not under phone, it's under devices and numbers. Excellent. Okay, now we try and fix up this thing here. So we told it was a bring your own device phone, so we should be able to to uh, edit this. So we're going to set up and provision. All right, and 
add the model that we're dealing with, yay link T53W. All right, then next. All right, at this point here, uh, we are going to go to the phone itself and look at the MAC address. MAC address is the low level firmware address of the ethernet port, uh, which identifies this, uh, it's a unique name for the phone. Um, you can access that by going to the phone, hitting menu and selecting status off the menu and it will show you the MAC address. Uh, or um, if you know the IP address of the phone, then you can go into the web interface and get that information as well. So we do an advanced and proceed on safe, blah, blah, blah. Uh, default password on all these phones should be admin and blank, I think. Of course not. Sometimes it's admin, admin. All right, and of course, yeah, it warns us about the default password. All right, and so looking at the phone interface, we can see the MAC address. We want the MAC address of the physical hardware ethernet port, not the Wi-Fi MAC address. Um, because uh, I would never want to set up one of these phones using Wi-Fi because that will just make the phone um, uh, call quality that much shittier. So uh, all the phones are physically hardwired together. So we use that MAC address. So we're going to go ahead and copy that and paste it in there. And we got to take the periods out or else it won't understand it or colons, excuse me. All right. So then we do next. Okay, now we have to factory reset the device. Now it's going to get a little kooky at this point. Um, odds are, you know, when we go to do this, it's going to show it's failed. And then after we recycle the screens and stuff, it'll come uh, out correctly. So uh, going to the phone, we have to uh, factory reset it. And it gives us the instructions here. Uh, and yeah, it's under upgrade. Okay, so uh, since we're already logged into the phone at the, use, at the interface, um, we can... Go ahead and change it here. Okay, and the upgrade option is under settings, which makes some sense. And we tell it uh, reset to factory settings. And then do OK. If you look at the phone, the screen will start to, um, it'll turn bright and it'll say resetting to factory settings. And please wait. Typically, this process, uh, if the phone, everything is okay, it should take three to five minutes to cycle because it has to, it has to go out, uh, get the provision information, upload a update to its uh, software stack, and and then re reconnect to the Ring Central server system. Okay, the. Uh, the three or four minute you'll see on the screen, welcome, initializing, please wait. Okay, when it's uh, got done with its updating stuff, uh, well, the first round, then you'll see a config updating. This is where it's talking to the Ring Central server and it's getting the user account information. At this point here, we can call that done. And, okay, we're doing when, on this phone, we're doing a firmware update now. That will also take two or three minutes. And when we go look at our phone system and phones and devices, user phones, we will see that the phone we created, is it shows currently offline because it's still in the firmware update. As I said, this will take a few minutes. You'll get a message on the phone now, firmware updating, do not power off, download it, install, and yeah, it looks like it takes about two minutes to download the software. All right, at this point, the phone has uh, updated its firmware, rebooted and reconfigured itself, and uh, if you'll look at it uh, on the display in the upper left-hand corner, the uh, the phone buttons should have the name of the user account 
uh, that, that, that is that assigned outbound phone number. All right, from this point, we can do some additional configuration tweaks to get things to look um, more the way we want it and the behavior. So we will go ahead and do that. First thing we want to do on the display, existing phone is not very useful, so we're going to change that name. And typically, I, I name it to uh, whatever user account it's assigned to. That seems to, seems to work uh, fairly well. All right. We can recheck this information that we've got the right extension, right uh, direct inward dial number, data usage, bandwidth, and uh, the emergency response locations. All that is good, and we save that. All right, and we see let's refresh. Uh, this has gone green because uh, it now recognizes it's online. Of course, now we did a minor change, so the phone will reboot again. Uh, we'll do this a few times as we're reconfiguring. Okay, looking at the um, outward dial numbers that we have on here, the, the things are labeled sales user, which would be its default. And uh, obviously that is kind of, a, kind of an awkward name and it doesn't fit entirely into the tag. So this is where we use uh, short names on, on the numbers in use and change the name of the number so that the button on the display will look like something more um, useful. So let us go here and here and do that. And we change this to sales as the name and save. All right. Now, because of the interactive voice response slash auto attendant thing, each uh, phone number in the system is usually assigned to a call group. So when uh, people call on the main number, welcome to something, something electric, press one for this, two for that, three for the other thing, it rings to the appropriate numbers. So we want to assign this sales user to the group that's appropriate so that the auto attendant will do its job. So we go into that account and group membership and add the queue that it should be a part of. And in this case, it should be Washington Sales. And we add that. All right, so now the IVR will do what it is supposed to. IVR is interactive voice response. Okay, a little bit of a correction. Um, the soft phone buttons uh, the programmable buttons to press and just uh, get an extension. The label that's on it is tied actually to um, the user name. So in this case, most people's names are much longer than the eight or nine characters that will fit in the button. Uh, the only way that you could fix this would be to go into the account and the user details for that user and change this uh, to something like, you know, um, Doug and F, you can't leave any of these blank. And if you did that, then uh, it would shorten up the button appropriately, but it would look a little kooky on the user accounts. So keep that in mind. If it's something that is a real nuisance to people, uh, that can be fixed that way. And the last couple of things that we would check on here is, all right. Um, the T53W has uh, eight uh, programmable line buttons on it. Uh, it programs the first two automatically with U, but you can change that around. The way you would go, uh, go about doing that is, um, let's see here, you go to devices and phones and you select presence. All right, this will allow you to assign additional extensions to the key buttons. Uh, so if, uh, and you can change the, the ring out and pick up, but say for instance, um, Fatima, uh, hears Ash's phone ringing all the time and he's told her to answer it. If it rings the, um, we, we can program a, a button here with Ash's number on it. And you can also program in ring central, a, a group pickup, uh, or a pickup number extension possibly as an additional function and that would allow her to pick up the call. And that's what that's for. Okay, uh, one last bit 
on the outbound calls and faxes. Uh, this will control uh, what number you want displayed on the remote side when you make a call out. Um, we're in constantly changing this around, and so at this case, every every user is kind of set a little differently. Uh, by default, it would be programmed to um, to uh, send out your direct and word dial number. Uh, that's great and all, but in many cases, a lot of those voice over IP numbers that you that we uh, lease from Ring Central have been used by uh, call robot farms, and uh, and a person on the other side may actually get that number as a uh, spam caller ID type of thing. Uh, so uh, generally speaking, we would want to pick whatever the the main uh, phone number is. So if someone sees that caller ID, they would know it's our main published number. And if they went to return the call, they would get the interactive voice response. In the current programming, what makes most sense for um, Santa Ana would be the 444-2626 number, and for Washington, uh, that's going to be uh, debatable. Probably uh, we would use the Beverly Hills Electric um, uh, number anyway. So uh, I think here the common phone number is going to be what's used in most cases. That's the okay 714 number, uh, but we might want to ra change ring out and change that to the main number as well. And that's how that is done. So uh, that part will probably change a little bit at some point in the future, but generally speaking, for all the Santa Ana people, um, the ringing out and common number should be 444-2626. Anyway, um, we're going to discard those changes. That is the basics of how to set up a new user and phone. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Thank you for your time and attention. Have a wonderful afternoon.